salesperson or a sales leader who put somebody on blast publicly for executing sales. Like you said, yeah. if, if they're not doing a good job, you know, like if they're not good at the outreach that they're doing to me as a sales leader, I'm going to give them tips. I'm going to try to help yeah. them out, but I'm not going to go like, Hey Katie, I can't believe you sent me this bad sales email. You're the worst. And you know, pop it up there. Cause it's not productive. It's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It doesn't move the sales industry further. No, it just gives more, um, it allows for more fear from people, mm -hmm. right? And and the last thing you want is a sales group that's full of fear. Like that's that's not good. <laughs> it's not good for anybody. Yeah. Well, whenever there's fear, you lose creativity, and it's the creativity that's going to bring you, you know, the deals and the opportunities. Exactly. Exactly. Like me personally, and I, I know you you're aligned with me on this, but me personally, I am in this to kind of move salespeople forward and, and be more accepted and not to have, have sales as a dirty word. And the reason it's a dirty word is because of both ways of people not doing the right things. And then consequently them not getting the right leadership and help to do the right things. So yeah. then all we do is just annoy people and, and, and bug them like crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love those uh, 18 step sequences. <laughs> you annoy them into talking to you right exactly okay, let's see uh, okay give me one second here mm -hmm. just having some technical challenges with uh, hey, Susan, you are not late we're about to throw james on camera here and throw him into the swing so you are right on time Hey, for those of you just joining, if you want to tell us who you are, where you're from, um, I know we've got a very international group usually. So if you want to throw in the chat who you are, where you're from, if you want to toss your LinkedIn, make sure the two is to panelists and attendees. Otherwise, just as panelists will see it. I will start. I am coming from y'all or coming to, to y'all from Fort Worth. Tejas. Hey, Becca from Virginia. Becca, do you have snow yet? Let's see. Hey, Harlan, coming in from Guadalajara. No, no snow yet. <laughs> hey, Mike, coming in from Boston, Seattle. <coughs> hey, Larissa, welcome. from Buenos Aires. Wow, Kevin, what's it like in Argentina? I've never been there. Tell me what, what are the top two or three things down in Buenos Aires? I bet there's beaches, right? I could sound so ignorant, I have no clue. But I feel like beaches could be a good answer on that. Everything. Thanks, thanks things. Katie, for hold, holding the floor. <laughs> hey, I can talk to a wall, so. <laughs> totally, totally. Let's do this. Well, here, we're just going to bring James over. Love the barbecue, Kevin. Mr. Bodden of Outbound Hey, View. James. Welcome. Rocking his new, not-so-new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, James? Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Uh, and I do just, I just have the hair back. I haven't, haven't gotten a haircut uh, in quite a while. So oh, I thought, I thought you said, oh, okay. Okay. You got me. I, I, I thought I saw a post on you that you cut your hair, but you just, it was just a, uh, one of those fancy just images. A, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> well, I'm it's, happy uh, to be here to talk about much more important things than, uh, than my haircut. Totally. <laughs> You're right. We want to know, are you using scrunchies or regular ponytail holders? What, what is it? Are you part of the scrunchie crew? <laughs> I'm not yet, uh, only because I don't have any cool ones. Uh, so if anybody sees this and wants to send me cool scrunchies, I will definitely become part of the scrunchie crew for sure. <laughs> <laughs> <I love it. laughs> well, um, now that we're all in, in the group together, why don't we, uh, Katie's already got everybody to introduce themselves. 
Um, I'm going to throw up a poll real quick on uh, LinkedIn. So the, the topic of today is actually LinkedIn prospecting, um, which is a topic all three of us on the panel really are really passionate about. In fact, James has a really cool announcement. Um, while I'm putting up the poll, why don't you tell people about what you're announcing soon? Um, but I'm going to launch a poll right away on when should you use a message in your LinkedIn connection request? So I'll pop that up and uh, James, you want to tell people? About yeah, absolutely. Um, so to fill the gap here, uh, here at Outbound View, we are passionate about doing LinkedIn prospecting the right way. Uh, I've spent the last four years of my career figuring out the right way and the wrong way to do it from a personal uh, experience side of things. And so i um, really excited to announce that uh, come January 1, uh, Outbound View will be releasing a training program called Process to Pipeline that's going to be solely focused on a repeatable process of LinkedIn outreach the way that it needs to be done for it to be effective on a consistent basis. Um, not treating it like email, not treating it like the phone, treating it like it's a, uh, its own channel, which it is. And so um, this is really exciting to be here to talk to, you know, with you two who are well versed in this uh, subject matter, you know, as well and, and um, talk about this because it's definitely top of mind for us here at Outbound View and really excited about um, our, our training platform process, the pipeline that's kind of centered around um, avoiding ending up on one of these teardown uh, <laughs> sessions, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Well, thanks for sharing that, James. I'm really excited uh, to see what this is all about. And I'm sure our listeners are as well, our viewers are as well. Um, so I'm going to close the poll now. Um, so it turns out we have uh, a significant victory here. 47% um, of the group says uh, that sometimes. So you should use a LinkedIn connection note sometimes. Um, and instead of asking you two for your opinions, I'm going to go ahead and get right into the teardowns because these opinions will come up. <laughs> right? um, so here we go. We're going to share the results real quick. So I also think it could be worth mentioning that almost a third think that you should always have. Yeah. So I'm curious as we get going in here to hear from you, James, on what your thought would be around why you should always have it. Is there a certain group of people you should always be messaging with, you know, what that looks like. So we will get into it for sure. Yeah. So, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to share the screen and boom. So that's our pretty mugs. You already seen these, <laughs> but, uh, again, welcome to sequence practice number seven. Um, so this is our seventh biweekly event that we did this year, uh, where we actually tear down, um, email, phone, uh, social script sequences, uh, so that you at home uh, watching and most of you are at home um, watching get to know how to really execute effective outbound sales scripts and sequences. So um, the goal today is we're really looking at focusing on the one channel, which is LinkedIn. And as you could tell from our introduction, we have the perfect panel here for you. Um, and what's really cool is that um, in addition to a couple submissions that we received from RevUp for salespeople sending their scripts, James and I have opened up our uh, LinkedIn inbox and are going to show you actual messages we have received um, from sales reps and company founders trying to get us to uh, you know, book a call, uh, connect, a whole bunch of different things. So I'm really excited to, to, to get started today. Um, and first off, before uh, starting, I wanna share this little quote that I got from one of my good friends and connections He's the CEO of a tech company. He's been, this is his third successful company. One, the first one was a, was a huge, um, huge exit. And I asked him point blank, like, do you get pitched a lot on LinkedIn? And he says, yeah, get pitched a lot. He ignores 99%. He says they're generic and meaningless. And he says that the 1% he pays attention to, and this is really important, are the ones that are clearly written for him and his company and have a whole lot of specifics. So this is, a, this is your buyer for a lot of you. This is your buyer that is telling you directly. I, 
ignore everything except if it's exactly for me, right? So um, before we get into it, I wanted to share that little nugget of information. Um, has Who here has heard that from people? I'd like to hear on the comments. Who's here heard that from their prospects or, or colleagues or customers? No. Nope. Many times. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, template pitches. Yep. A hundred percent. So, um, with that said, thank you. Uh, we're going to step into our first, uh, review. So this is going to be exclusively LinkedIn connection requests. Um, and so the first one, uh, James, you want to read that out? <laughs> oh, you're muted. <laughs> nope. Sorry about that. Um, well, I was just, I, I was muted because the first I there, the first letter of this message seems to be muted as well. Um, you know, uh, just right off the bat, like to broaden my connections and would love to add you to my professional network, care to connect, kind regards, the famous dreaded brackets that you hate seeing. Um, yeah, I mean, look, this is... Um, this is a rough one, right? Uh, one that, um, you know, it just screams no attention to detail. And, you know, this falls into a class of, um, you know, just why, <laughs> right? I think why? somebody <laughs> in the chat, just why, 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 why? So um, these quickly get just discarded, right? If you can't take the time to make sure that, you know, your field, even, hey, if you're going to put me in a sequence, at least make sure the fields are set up correctly, you know, I, yeah. uh, at, at the very least. So, um, oh, oh, sorry, not a James, I, have, I have to be fair to the sender. Um, so the way that we try to make these as anonymous as possible. So I purposely, we purposely put in rep first name instead of their okay. actual name. Okay, okay so, perfect. That makes me feel so much better, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and it, glad I, that we got that <laughs> cleared up. Uh, yeah, yeah, Because, you know, the sad part is the fact that I would even think that that was possible means that it's happened in real life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and it has. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, it's just those little things like the attention to detail of not, you know, just glancing over that. Um, it's way too high level. Yeah, I mean, Mark uh, has a good point. Who who says kind regards in real life? Um, <laughs> That's not so, natural, is it? <laughs> it? Not in the circle that I run in. So uh, this this is not a successful LinkedIn connection request to me. Uh, this, this this falls into, you know, sorry, you're gonna just get the old ignore button on this. Right. How about you, Katie? What do you think? <laughs> so I'm a big fan of not sending messages. Okay. I don't think I've ever, I think I tried it whenever I was prospecting really aggressively and I would make it, it's like whenever we look at sequences, we always talk about how if we make a call, we want it to reference the email. We want the email to reference the voicemail. So there's like that continuous thread. Yeah. If I do this with prospecting, I'm going to continue that. So I'm going to say, hey, I left you a voicemail, or hey, I sent you an email, I wanted to connect, whatever, if I was going to do that. Or make it super specific, like what we mentioned, and say, hey, James, I loved your post on, you know, a couple days ago talking about prospecting. I would love to, you know, get on a 15-minute call and pick your brain. I, if it was me, I'd rather get that than, you know, this. Because a lot of these, I just, especially if I have no mutual connections, I'm like, I'm not going to accept you. I don't know who you are. Yeah. Shoo -shoo. <laughs> it's just boring, right? Like, it's, yeah. there's nothing inspiring me to actually care. Like, why do I care to connect? So I'm going to, am I going to take the time to look at this person's profile and learn about them if they haven't really told me anything useful? Um, like, to your point, Katie, uh, I, I would rather have no note and just, uh, okay, then they look at my headline, they look at my profile and they go, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're, you're worth their time. Because like whenever you think about this, especially whenever you're putting this, not just to, to broaden your network, not just to learn from others, but if you're looking specifically with prospecting, yeah. what value are you bringing to them, right? We've talked about this before. You're starting it with I. Yeah. I want to broaden my connection and would like to add you to my network, not the other way around. And it's not about the customer. So why would I waste my time talking to this person? 
totally. I don't know. Just a thought. Just a thought. Yeah, I agree. And, and I mean, um, so thought. interesting in, in the comments, Richard <laughs> said, why ever add a message? So I bet you there's a lot more people out there um, that are thinking whatever A, B, C, or D you were on the poll, you're probably thinking, why would people always, or why would people never and whatever else? So I'd be very curious to see in the comments why, what you chose and why. I'd be very interested in seeing that. And <laughs> so, um, okay, so never. Uh, Richard obviously says never. <laughs> uh, so well, gonna... <laughs> in Larissa, she asked a question. She brought up kind of an interesting point of, do you think it's shady if you're not disclosing your intentions? Because I think we've all probably gotten pitches on our, these little connection requests of like, hey, I'm going to connect with you because I want to sell it to you. And their thought is like, oh, I'm being authentic. And they're yeah. taking it as it is. They know what they're getting. But I don't think it's shady if you don't. But I think there's like that level of tactfulness yeah. where you don't just, you know, send them a connection request and then like, I'm going to pitch you right away on the first message, right? Like you build that relationship. But no one thinks that long game. So that's where people really screw up. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, uh, let's go on to the next one now. So... This is one I received literally like two days ago, um, just as I was putting this together. So it's, dear Jeff, just wanted to connect as I noticed you enjoyed the same content as me, Dale Dupree. Um, I'm also interested to see what kind of content you share, let's connect. Uh, and then yes, her name. <laughs> uh, so question, what's your initial thoughts? So for me, these are, this is definitely more in the right lane, right? Uh, my favorite connection requests are when somebody's mentioning something specific uh, that I've been a part of or done or interacted with. I think this is like, this is getting about as high level as, as really is allowed before you start, before it starts becoming gimmicky, right? Because I think what we're starting to see now is, um, these sequencing tools can sense, you know, you can track a post and then take everybody that's liked a post and then put them into a sequence where you say, I saw that you liked Jeff's post, you know, um, which is yeah. efficient, but is it uh, the best way to run your plays on LinkedIn if you're trying to build relationships? Probably not, right? Because this is kind of what I think that falls into, right? It's like, okay, I noticed you like somebody else. There's some, um, and I think for a lot of people, maybe people that aren't <laughs> maybe as jaded or inundated with, <laughs> with messages would see this and say, yeah, okay, that's fair. That's cool. Come on, take a look at the content that I share. I think it's better on the end of not being so focused on them right? They're interested in seeing what kind of content you share, which is great. Yeah. Um, they left it open, like, let's connect, like, meh, yeah. maybe. So I think that it's definitely in the better, better swim lane and better vein of um, being more focused about who you're connecting with, mentioning something that's a little bit more relevant, but still, you know, um, I, the thing about LinkedIn is that you give it three more months and this, this thing is going to be tired right? Yeah. Because everybody's going to catch on. So yeah, yeah. Um, this is much better though. Yeah, no, I, I agree, James. I, and, and it's funny you say that because um, I heard, I have a phrase uh, I'm going to borrow from Scott Barker on a previous sequence practice. And he says that when, once something becomes a best practice, it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. So the more people take the approach and, and this is the thing is this is why we run this bi-weekly is because um, things that we say don't work today could work tomorrow and vice versa right? Like things that work today could not work tomorrow. So it's just a matter of when you're doing this, where right now this works, right? Tomorrow, like you said, James, three months probably might not work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a moving target. Yeah, exactly. Katie, what do you say? So I also think it's important to remember that everyone's industry is different and every person's different. So what may work for one may not work with the other. And so I think it's worth trying different techniques, just like whenever you're back in school, think about it. If your teacher taught everyone the same way, yep. there's a likelihood that you may not have picked up on it. You, you know, the person next to you may not have been able to pick up on it. And so if you think about it like that, yep. 
statistically, you're not going to have high success rates. You'll, you will have success because there's that percentage that does breed that way and does get it that way. But you have to try different avenues. And this is why LinkedIn and emails and phone calls and whatever based on industry makes sense, whether it be Facebook for realtors or who, whoever, that's why it's so important to have a, what, I don't even know what the technical term is called of this. Christina talked about this a couple weeks ago. What is it? We're like the multi technical omni channel. Omni -channel. I think Mark. Omni yeah, Mark in the chat. I'm an active blog. Mark says please omni channel. Me. <laughs> 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 this is natural. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's why it's so important. I think some people would be totally fine with this. I think some people are so busy that they don't even look at their LinkedIn messages. Yep. So I think you have to do, when you think about prospecting, you have to do what makes sense based on the time and the effort. Yep. Um, I wouldn't have been, I would have made it more specific. Like, right. hey, I, you saw this. What did you think about this question? Did you see this in the threads? Yep. Whatever. I had no clue that there was this technology out there where you can gather the list. So uh, <laughs> I could Watch be a little out. stoic. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, the that's good. Really good points, Katie. And, and the, the thing that I look at is um, my premise is that there is no silver bullet. I don't believe that there's one way for anybody and that the one way is to test, <laughs> right? Yeah. Is to try something that should work, make observations, optimize. That is the way it works because what works for my industry won't work for yours and, and vice versa. So um, yeah, hundred percent agree with you as well, you extremely. Um, so I'm going to take a vote here. So there's three of us. So it's going to be clear winner. Did I accept this connect or no? I'm going to say you did. A hundred percent. You're a softie. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I would say, yes, it does work right now. So the majority of people will use this. <laughs> okay. So third one. Yeah. Um, again, this to me, uh, I very similar to Jeff, I have a pretty low barrier to entry, right? I'm not out here trying to not add people or yeah. be mad about connection requests, right? Yeah. I simply, what, what connection requests help people do is categorize you, <laughs> right? So when I get a specific kind of LinkedIn request, now I can kind of almost tell how this is gonna go, right? If I get the generic one, I know that in a couple of days, they're gonna send another email, probably with a calendar link in, you know, in that note. And then a couple of days, you know, and we'll see what I'm talking about here <laughs> with the examples that I've shared. But, you know, so this for me would get categorized in, okay, I'm going to accept this connection request, but they're probably going to send me some sort of message on the back of wanting to sell me something about my podcast. Right. You know, um, and I'm going to look at, you know, in an instance like this, I'm going to look at, you know, the person's profile a little bit, or at least their little top line, right? Just to see, see if I can do some detective work to put two and two together. Um, am I overly concerned about that? Am I taking a lot of time to think about it? No, you know, they're going to become a connection request and we'll see how it goes from there. But this isn't necessarily all that moving to me. Um, yeah. it, it mentioned, you know, hey, awesome. You, you know, I do a podcast. It's pretty, you know, pretty obvious and pretty upfront. So not impressed <laughs> with the level of personalization or anything like that. But uh, I think a more, you know, somebody that maybe is a little bit more picky about who they let into their network, this might not make it. Um, so I think it generic would be the good, you know, a good description of this one to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd have to agree on there. I, I'm not a fan of, I came across you and your podcast. I don't like when people start by saying I came across you because it just speaks to the idea that, I mean, and maybe it's because I know better. I, I'm using the tools. I, I teach people how to use the tools. I know there's zoom info, LinkedIn sales navigator and all these different things that make it so easy to come across my profile. But uh, again, maybe that's a bias, but I, I'm not a fan of that messaging. What do you say, Katie? 
I think, starting with I, uh, <laughs> I think honestly, if we all look at what we actually send in our messaging, 90% of the time, myself included, it starts with I. So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> because I honestly, realistically, I, it's probably like, hey, I saw this, thought it was cool, thought we should connect. But I also think, like, I like the looking forward to your reply part on it, because that's kind of like an assumptive close of sorts, or, you know, looking forward to hearing from you, or I don't know. Um, but it's like, why even send it? Like, what about, like, what about this is different than just sending a regular message? Like, not even sending anything. You're probably going to get connected. And yeah, then yeah. if you don't even say anything, then you can message that person and say, super stoked to, to get on a call with you, or super stoked to, to be connected with you. Love this episode of the podcast. Do you have 30 minutes to talk about it? And that person, the podcast guy, just wants to be special and wants to be heard. And they're flattered whenever you ask for that time. Ego, so. inflating the ego, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this. What Evan put in the comments is uh, personalized message is greater than no message is greater than can message. Yes. Evan, just want to give oh. a little shout out. He just joined and uh, off of our LinkedIn link. So glad I sent that link to you, Evan. Excited to have you here. Right on. Yeah, well, and thanks for that nugget of information. That was fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, put that uh, on a t-shirt and send it to some of these folks, right? <laughs> totally, right? <laughs> uh, so with that said, uh, let's do votes now. Did we, uh, should we accept this or no? You know, you know how I feel. I'm, I'm saying yes on this one. Yes on this one? For better or worse. Okay, I'm going to go no. Katie, what do you say? I think it depends if I have any mutual connections. But genuinely, if I got this message, I'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd probably say no. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay. So for the last one, we're going to do this one. So what do you think of this one, folks? No message? <laughs> No message. <laughs> Love it. That's the best one we've seen yet. Yeah. We <laughs> That's the best one we've seen yet. Yeah. Look, I mean, I'm right there with Katie. Uh, I can't remember the last time I sent a message with a connection request. I, I, I just haven't done it in so long. You know, I, there are a few people, you know, the question earlier, when would it be appropriate or when do you... Um, there are people that I've seen, and typically, if I'm going to go connect with somebody, it's for a reason. It's not just because I'm, you know, I'm going through and adding 25 people every day or something like that. It's, I've followed them, I've been aware of them through second degree connections or something like that. We, I have some sort of knowledge about them, and a lot of the times, there's one particular person that comes to mind, and this is the last connection request I sent, which was a couple of years ago. Um, Shout out to Ted Rubin. Uh, he's a CMO at a company called Photofy. And he's adamant about that he's just not going to accept any LinkedIn requests without a message. That's just his modus operandi. And he's yeah. not going to do it. Yeah. And um, I was connected, you know, through somebody else and saw enough of his content and knew enough about how he felt about it to say, okay, if I really want to connect with Ted, I'm going to need to just, you know, shed my own process here and write a little message, send it over. And it, you know, it, I think I even mentioned the fact that I, I would never typically send a message, but knew that it was important to him and, and something to that effect. Right. So it's very contextual. I think, I think everybody said it here, context, 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 personalizations, you know, specific, uh, being specific, like yeah. uh, either nothing like this, um, which is the way that I, typically will go unless it's you know just somebody special that just is very clear uh that they're not going to accept my connection request but i, I can't remember the last time somebody <laughs> just you know told me that they weren't going to accept it because i didn't send a message i just it's just not something that i um have done in a while sounds like katie you're the same way yeah i don't uh i don't really send messages you know what though I actually, I sent one today. I sent one today with a connection request 
he has not accepted it. So <laughs> statistically speaking, it's not going very well. <laughs> and I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. Shameless plug, Sales Hacker has an event coming up January 26th. And this guy, I was asking to be a part of our VIP panel. And he is a C-level exec at a pretty big uh, HR type company. And so I messaged him and I just kept it short. And so he was like, Hey, would you be interested in talking with these people at these, you know, I listed the companies like very well to do companies. Yeah. And I just asked, what are your thoughts? So I like to keep it open like that if I do it, but it's not going well. Yeah. No. Well, you know, I'm not, uh, as, as I said, I'm just not a fan of, of using a note at all anymore. And I used to be all about always, but what I'm, what I'm hearing is the always or the never crew, there's always an exception. So, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the only time I'm going to use the word always and really mean it because yeah. <laughs> there's always an exception and there's never an always. Okay. So, um, so the point is, is that when you are doing your prospecting and you're reaching out to people, um, you're doing research, you're getting to know them. You, you're, mm -hmm. you're learning more from dealing with people just like them or similar to them in your company. So you learn things. And when you learn things, you might have to break your process just like James did, right? Like you might have to break your process and that's okay. Just do what you need to do to get it done. <laughs> that's really it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think people try and um, take the social out of the social network part <laughs> of LinkedIn and try and make it too structured. Yeah. Like do this one thing and only this one thing works. <laughs> like, yeah. No, yeah. you'll make all, you'll have all the friends. Totally. <laughs> and, and, all the connection. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to Katie's point from earlier, it's, it's like, there's, some customers ask me, well, a lot of them ask me, should we be on LinkedIn? Shouldn't or shouldn't we be on LinkedIn or whatever? And I say, the big cap, caps lock, it depends, right? Mm -hmm. Is your audience there? If your audience isn't on LinkedIn, like I, I have another company that's industrial and the customers that I deal with aren't sitting behind their computer. They're not playing on their smartphone. They're literally talking on their phone all day. Like they're not looking at their phone. They're talking on their phone. So should you be on LinkedIn? Probably not. They're not going to care. Like they usually have like a logo, uh, no picture of themselves. And then, you know, 40 years on the job. <laughs> That's their LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Do you think you're going to get that person on LinkedIn? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, so, okay. So now if, if we were to talk about three things to make uh, everybody here better at LinkedIn connections, what were those three things be? For, you know, me, it's, it's um, context, personalization, and being as specific as possible, right? I think that's just huge. And it seems like everybody kind of feels that way about if you're going to make the effort to do this, context, got to be personal, it's got to be specific. Because the old the old tricks get old very quickly, you know, and, 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 um, as for the third one, I, I'll leave that for Jeff, you and Katie. And Katie, you want to do the honors? <laughs> um, I, I feel like this should just be like an overall theme and it kind of plays like what we were talking about earlier of like, just don't be afraid of, of messaging people on LinkedIn. Like obviously don't be like weird or creepy, but like there's so many horrible people that'll put people on blast but hopefully with these strategies like you'll have a little bit more confidence to just try because for every one horrible person that's going to put you on blast there are hundreds if not thousands of people connected to them who yeah. will see it and will one poo poo on that person but then also may message you and say hey i'm actually a consultant i do this training i'd like to offer this for free and help you and so like, just be willing to make those, make, take those chances and make those changes as you see them. But like, also like just constantly text because one thing you say for one person may not work for everyone else. So. Right. Yeah. Good point, Katie. Thank you. So we've got context and personalization matter, be specific and be brave. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
Um, so we have a whole bunch of really good um, messages to go through and we're just about 10 minutes from the end of the show. So um, I'm gonna, we're gonna go through a little bit faster on this next round if that's okay with everybody. Um, so now we're gonna go into actual LinkedIn messages. So this is now you've gotten a connection. This is what people send. Um, so let's, let's start, read this and tell me, should somebody uh, respond to this message in a positive way? Yeah, so, you know, the reason that I sent this over is because I think this is very, <laughs> very typical. The first line is what does it for me. The first line is where I tune out. Um, it's, it's just so, such an overused phrase. Hope you're doing well during these uh, unprecedented times. I mean, to me, I immediately know, got it. This isn't a real message from a real person, right? That's right. taking the time to look at my profile and do any of that, right? Yeah. Um, second piece would be at the first glance, way too much text. Never going to read any of that, especially since I've been turned off on the first message. But even if I thought, hey, maybe I'll give it a shot. Oh, I don't want to read all this, right? Yeah. Um, and, and <laughs> you know... <laughs> The third layer being that um, while it's somewhat relevant to what they're referring to, that the Lunch Break Media Group does, it's so, because of the way that it started and because of the, the, the way that it's mapped out and, and with, with all this text, I just know that this is a se that an automated sequence. And so right. I'm just personally not going to engage with that as a jaded sales development person that's you know made all the sequencing mistakes in the world i just as a kind of principle i'm not going to engage until you kind of step outside of the sequence and show me that you've done something real for me right um so for me this is a this falls really really flat and it starts with that really generic first line yeah katie what do you say thanks yeah Tim. so <laughs> I feel like I, I do a lot of things like with compassion <laughs> because I always just want people to like to be nice to me. So <laughs> I feel like people are just too mean on LinkedIn with certain things like this. I, cause honestly, whenever you look at this, what do you think? You think of a 20, 21 year old right out of college. And this is the script that their sales enablement gave them. And this is what they're supposed to do because sometimes, right. We go to that like tiny percentage of this works. Right. And, and they're told they have to do social selling, but they don't know what it is. They're not taught how to have these conversations. And especially when you think of college kids and like, think back to your first like corporate job, you're in the real world. You're now an adult like a big kid job and you act differently. And these people are just people, right? Like if you think about it, you're like, oh, I have to be so proper. And instead you could have been like, hey, saw that you do this, pretty cool, think we could work together, let's get on a call. Like they aren't trained to talk like that. Yeah. And so I look at this as somebody that wants, one, like they are going the step above. They're not just messaging on email. They're not just calling, like they are taking the extra effort yeah. and Luckily with Sales Hacker, whenever I get stuff like this, I'm able to be like, hey, did you read this article? And <laughs> like, here's how to prospect on LinkedIn. But <laughs> so I've been able to like send it back to them and they're like, oh no, really interesting. I'm like, yeah, I think you might find a lot of value without being like, this is horrible. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for those that are in leadership roles, like to take a chance to help somebody who may not know. And it's really easy to do that and just respond like, hey, yeah. You know, I get that you're probably told to say this. This isn't what's going to get people like me interested. Yeah. Good, and, good. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to mention, you know, I think one of the, I'm right there with you, Katie, right? The SDR bashing and being hard on these folks that are a lot of the times aren't even writing these messages. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, that's tough. Um, I purposely included some of these. So like this one in particular is from a business owner. So I've seen a recent thing here recently where I'm getting a lot of messages, less and less from BDRs, frontline yeah. BDRs and SDRs, and a lot more from these CEOs and founders that seem to have found this yeah. channel of LinkedIn. Um, and so this is coming from a, from a business owner, um, you know, directly, which I think is an interesting thing to think about, right? Because I'm sure she's getting pitched as a business owner. And it's just very interesting, um, yeah. you know, the kind of dynamic there, but I'm 
right there with you. I think, um, you know, it's a tough job to go out there and, and do cold outreach. Um, being mean to people on the back of it <laughs> doesn't help anybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure. this, this is, so what Katie was saying is really, and what you've just alluded to here, James, is that um, I recognize that I was being a little bit mean earlier in the year when I, when I started sequence practice, uh, when, when I get a bad pitch, I would say, Hey, you know what? There's areas that I think you could improve on here. And I, I'm not going to say I was being mean, but I was definitely being kind of like that, you know, authoritative, right? Like you're doing this wrong and here's what you need to do to fix it. Right. And then I got to a point where I was just sending them the link to sequence practice, you know, just like <laughs> attend, learn, whatever. Um, and, and now I recognize that like that is not productive. It's not helping them. So now I accept, I engage in conversation and I try to do what I can to kind of steer them in a, in, in the right direction. So, I take time out of my really busy day to help these people because they deserve help. <laughs> they deserve to, yeah. whatever their situation is, they deserve to have a human on the other end, talk to them like a human yeah. and kind of show them a better way. And I think that um, I'd like to kind of, um, you know, arm everybody here to do the same, you know, just to, mm -hmm. if you see a bad pitch, don't put them on blast. Don't like whatever, just actually communicate with this person and let them know that, they're a human being and they should act like human beings. <laughs> and if you haven't made the mistake yet and you're in the same role, you probably will. That's my thing. Any, any bad faux pas that any, anybody sent me, I've done. So that's my first thing. I tell them right away, hey, forgot to put my name in the token on the sequence. Fix that up before you send the next 25 out. <laughs> um, so yeah. Exactly. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just put no, <laughs> I don't think anybody, um, Katie and I had, ha, have beaten this topic up in two success, successful, um, sequence practices where we say too long equals don't it's too breathe. long. There's too much too if long. You're this on your phone. You're like, screw yeah. this. This is yeah. not I need a line. And then I'm dead. This is no. on a computer monitor right here, right? Yeah. Like, this is on a computer <laughs> monitor and it's too much. Imagine on your phone. Swipe. <laughs> like, too seriously. many swipes. It's too it's much. It's not Tinder. You're not yeah. swiping all the time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's how <laughs> I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that. Um, okay. So we're going to skip a couple others and go straight to what I thought was a, or what James thought was a good one. So James, yes. tell me about this one because we can't see what this was <laughs> okay yeah so the reason that i included this is because um there there's a few layers to why this worked um this austin connected with me a few weeks ago no connection request he just sent me a you know no personalized connection request just sent me the connection um he's liked a few of my posts since yeah. we connected um, one of the things that I've said since I've been connected with him was that I was, one of the posts I made was that I was tired of people not using voice notes on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that now, I don't know if he saw that post. I don't know if this is just, he's just smart and is taking advantage of a outreach method on LinkedIn that's underused, which is voice notes, which is what we're seeing here with this blue bar. Um, I don't know but it made me so happy because it's like, oh, awesome. A new connection that didn't connect and pitch me, interacted with some of my content over the last few weeks, yeah. maybe heard what I said about what I, how I wanna be prospected. And then the message, 29 seconds, it was so direct. It was, hey, this is Austin. I'm calling from Lightspeed. I see that you're over there at Outbound View. You're a director there. I wanted to see if what we do at Lightspeed would make sense, you know, for you guys. Now I have familiarity with Lightspeed. I know who that company is. Um, and so there's some, some, he has that working for him uh, already, but it was a, such a direct message. I mean, you can see how excited I was in my response back to him. I mean, man, just, couldn't have sent him my calendar link any quicker because I it, it was just spot on about a way to stand out. This popped out in my email in my LinkedIn messages so easily, you know, oh, a voice note. Awesome. You know, I dropped everything I was doing to listen to it. It was complete pattern interrupt. So much context, man, 
just thumbs up to Austin. Right on. Uh, well, uh, Katie, do you get a lot of uh, voice messages for, for sales hacker stuff? So I have started getting voice messages and videos and I love them. I think they are so much fun. And actually, um, I don't know if Zoe's on here, but Zoe works for BombBomb Bomb, and that's how we connected. She sent me a request and I was like, okay, I'll accept it. And then she sent me a message and was like, hey, I'm making a transition in my job at BombBomb Bomb, and I'm wondering if you can help me and sent a video and I thought it was really cool. And I think I've, I know I've mentioned it before, at least on LinkedIn, like we've had multiple video conversations and one where my dogs got into a fight <laughs> while we were on the call. But I, but I feel like you're, it's just so human. It's, you can hear the influxes, you can, you can feel the relationship. And I feel like you can really, if you're really listening, you can really hear like where the motivation is. And I think there's so much value to be done with that. Similarly, not everyone's doing it. So if you're willing to take 15 seconds to just record a short little snippet, it's worth it. Right. I'm a fan. No, I agreed. I mean, uh, I've been doing a lot more video lately, uh, not just in my prospecting, but also in responding to LinkedIn connection requests. In fact, just before the event here, um, I responded to a connection request and just sent a quick video and, you know, just a really personalized video with no intention whatsoever, just saying thanks for connecting. And I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that more often now because it's so easy and uh, it brightens people's days. So why not? Absolutely. So uh, we're going to jump right now into uh, three takeaways. So on LinkedIn follow-up messages, so not the connections, what are three things that people should know about that? Yeah, the first is you've got to break through the noise, pattern interrupts, voice notes, native video, right? So that's the first thing. Um, be direct and, and very honest and clear about why you're following up in, in brief, right? So, um, <laughs> you know, the worst thing you can do is, is, uh, send somebody, I think Mark said it, when you blur your eyes, you can't, <laughs> it just looks like one big long piece of text. Uh, you mentioned that in the chat. So, um, definitely that for the second one. And then the, the third one would be, um, and this isn't something we haven't necessarily touched on cause we skipped through of them, but you know, be consistent and, and follow up. Right. I think one thing that I see a lot is I'll get, a follow-up message, a really long follow-up message that just gave me all of <laughs> the information in the world. Um, but I, I don't get a follow-up message. Uh, and there's no consistency. So obviously you didn't really want to connect with me like you said you did, right? So I think interrupt the pattern, be direct, brief, and honest, and then be consistent. If you know if there's somebody that you really want to follow up with, continue that pattern, you know, a few times. People are busy. Yeah. You know, we, it's not that we want to ignore you. There's just other things going on. If you follow that for those first two steps, consistency, you know, just is that last piece that should help you develop a repeatable process. Right, right, right. No, I love it. Um, so we have two sequences we want to go through real quick. Um, so just like speaking of that consistency. So we're going to show one sequence and I know we've been talking all about positivity um, t today but we, uh, James and I were discussing this one. We have to actually show this because it's really, really, really bad to do what this person has done. Um, so we're going to show you something here and sorry, but it has to be shown. <laughs> so James, tell me about this one. So, yeah, I think, um, this example and the reason why I included it is because this is about the worst thing that you can do on LinkedIn. You know, um, this person is reaching out to me, um, offering me the same services that the company that I work for offers, right? So outbound view, we are an outsourced sales development lead generation. We go out, we book appointments for sales reps, like literally everything that they're saying here. Um, it's, this isn't the only one. I get this a lot. And I think maybe it has a little bit to do, and ironically, 
with the industry that I do work in, the lead generation industry, you'd think that lead generation folks would have this down uh, if it's what they're doing for <laughs> their job, but it's, it's pretty bad, right? And when you reach out to somebody and you've obviously just done no research, um, you know, sent me few, a few follow-ups, like I think even using language, like I haven't earned your response. Mm, okay, so <laughs> absolutely you haven't earned my response because you didn't do any research. Your targeting is off from the very beginning, right? You're choosing the wrong people to reach out to. So, you know, every now and then I will respond with, hey, the reason I'm not responding to this is because the services you're offering are the exact services that my company provides. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd ask that you please do your research before dropping more folks like me into sequences like this. Right. I mean, nothing overly mean, just really kind of calling out the simple fact that you are targeting people who are essentially competitors. And I, I didn't even see it as, at that level that, oh, this is my competition. It's just, wow, this is somebody that's on the same mission. You know, we have an abundance mindset here at Outbound View. There's enough for everybody to go around, right? Um, yeah. If this person reached out to me and said, hey, we work in the same industry. I'd love to learn from you or Let's see how you guys are. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I would jump on that call in a moment, but not when you're trying to sell me the same services and you haven't done your research. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, it's one of those scenarios where, it happens and it's, and it's not, uh, not something that I really can stand too much of after a while, if I'm being completely honest with you. So, and it needs a course correction for their sake and anybody in the future. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, like, um, the reason that this irks me so much is that concept of um, pure automation, like not even, not even vetting your target list, let alone um, personalizing your messaging that, that bugs me to my core because that just means that this person is literally glorified spammer and they're just yeah. doing LinkedIn. So they're, they're not considered spam because it's LinkedIn, but it is actually spam, right? Which is, is very unfortunate because, um, and, and, and again, like we don't want to put people on blast here or anything like that. That's not the point here. It's more about just recognizing the fact that, um, when you get into this type of prospecting, this does actually become spam. And, and it is actually against the law. <laughs> and so it's just, so, it's really important for people to know that not to do that is, is basically. Yeah. And I think another important point to make here is I haven't gotten a response. <laughs> um, I didn't get a response. A lot of the times when you do run into sticky or icky situations with LinkedIn outreach and you respond in a positive way, or maybe with some constructive feedback, you know, you get a response back. And when you don't, that's when you can categorize those folks as good old spam. For better or worse. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, Katie, uh, what do you say about this? What's your thoughts? Um, so I I feel like for this person, okay. So I this this whole have I earned the opportunity? Have I earned the right? I want to earn the right. This whole thing started on LinkedIn. What six months ago? Yeah. I feel like that's like when this lingo started to kind of become a thing. Yeah. But no, just like social selling a year ago, right? Social selling was like the thing to say on LinkedIn. Like, let's talk about social selling. Once again, nobody teaches how to social sell, right? <laughs> we need to talk about earning people's respect. No, who, who's actually teaching their team how to do this? How do you do it? How do you earn somebody's time, right? Like, I feel like it's a stupid little, like, <laughs> buzzword type thing that people are throwing in because they see these consultants and influencers on LinkedIn talk about it. But what does that even mean? How do you ask, like, how do you ask that without saying like, you know, I hope I get the privilege of taking up some time. I hope I earn your time. Like one, it's just another person. So by you, I think in my mind, by you saying that you're devaluing the offering that you have and giving them permission to say, well, you need to work for it. You haven't earned it. Right. So I have a really big problem with that type of terminology because it's just obvious, like somebody probably in sales enablement or marketing, forgive me, but somebody saw it on LinkedIn, saw how buzzy it was and said, we'll throw this in because this is what's happening. Right. I have a big problem with that. I'm not a fan of that. 
I think it's just ridiculous. I think she could have just said, hey, James, how's sales growth? I would have asked it differently. Be like, hey, I do this as well. And we're also struggling or we're struggling. What are you guys doing differently? I don't know. But if she was selling different. Yeah, I think to Jeff's point, I probably shouldn't have been in this sequence to begin with. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There was there was a mistake. There was a mistake way up the process of of uh, and a disconnection way up the process of even just list building. So you know whose problem it is? It's marketing's problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. You whoever... back off marketing, all right? <laughs> this, <laughs> Those this, leads. This the third time you talk snack about marketing, Katie. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> no, no. Yeah. I always move on marketing, even though I'm now kind of in marketing. <laughs> well, you know, one thing, <laughs> one thing we say here at Outbound View, because it continues to be true, is that in Outbound, you just, you live and die by your list. Mm-hmm. And so if you're off on the list and the target from the very beginning, yeah, you're not everything right. past that won't even matter. So yeah, that's yeah. what happened here. No, uh, 100%. Thank you so much for the insight on this one. Um, we have five minutes left. So I wanted to make sure we got to uh, the final submission, which is a, a sequence submission from a sales rep who uses this sequence and gets a 10% response rate. So um, first message, so this is the connect request. I wouldn't use this as a connect request. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, probably about if you could cut it in half in the number of words, I like the idea of just getting right to it. You know, I think being ambiguous or being shrouded in mystery is silly. Uh, I like the idea that they're just going right for, hey, like this is why I wanted to reach out. And if this is a priority for you, um, it'll definitely, I believe, help you avoid connecting with people that aren't interested in talking about this, right? I mean, if that's the goal uh, to, to weed those people out and you only want those people to interact that are actually interested, uh, interested in this, um, you may get a few fall through that way, but um, not a huge fan of, of this length um, more specifically in, in the connection request. Yeah. Right. So I like, me personally, yeah, I, I'm with both of you. I'd rather just see a blank here, to be perfectly honest. But I mean, I've kind of let that be known uh, more than <laughs> once in this in this, uh, in this hour. Um, I the one thing I do like um, is the reference to like the competitor industry leader. I like that call out. It's a great way to do personalization without having to have an actual personalized, like really in depth message. I like that. And I think there's probably ways that you can leverage that a little bit more in, in a message. You can actually build the message around that. So um, I, I do like that part. I think something too. So whenever I was very heavy on my SDR days, I was really big on selling towards emotion. Shocker, emotional over here. So um, I love, <laughs> how do you say no? No, responsible sourcing isn't a priority for me. <laughs> like, how do you say no to that, right? So it's like, yes, it is a priority for me. Like, yes, I don't think we should kill sea turtles. I mean, I don't know what responsible sourcing is, but like I'm assuming sea turtles. <laughs> yes, I'm positive that that's what they're referring to, the sea turtles. <laughs> you know, Fantastic. it's like, you have, to, you have to say yes to that. Like how they ask that question, that is not a marketing sentence. That is a seller who's watches and stuff because that's a good, good freaking question. Yeah, yep. Awesome. Um, so would, would you folks accept this? Yeah. I would. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, me too. I would probably respond with, I'm not the right person, but I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> I love to be I don't know who the right person is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so this is another attempt, uh, a, a LinkedIn in-mail. So somebody, I guess, who didn't respond to that connection request, they get the LinkedIn uh, in-mail. I feel like it's so long. Yeah. This whole um, 
the urns back in there. There's that word again. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, it's too long. Um, I'm such a fan of these short text messages, voice notes, videos. I'm just such a fan of that mm -hmm. because it's there. It's there the same way that writing out a text message is, right? It's not like it's hard to access or only a certain group of people have those features. Yeah. So for me, man, if, if you just put this into a 30 second voice note saying the same thing, you could say the same thing. The message itself, there's nothing wrong with this. I think if we're looking at it from just an outreach messaging, point of view mm. yeah. you know we could go through it and probably pick a few things apart but you know it's focused on things that are probably relevant to that icp um but linkedin i just don't think is the place to be rolling out this kind of messaging right i think you multimedia use the voice use the video so um for me this isn't a go but I can see where the 10% response rate comes through because it's not the longest of the long. It's not yeah. a whole novel. Yeah. I love that they didn't include any calendar links. I love that there are no other links that are going to pop up with some weird preview. I hate that <laughs> when people send through links in their messages. So yeah. um, I think for better or worse, if you're going to go down the um, route of a text follow-up, you know, this is about as good as you could probably get. Yeah. Good call. Uh, Katie, what do, you, do you have anything to add? Uh, I just wouldn't have asked the question that they asked in the bottom. Can I get 15 minutes of your time to tell you what my product does? Right. I would have asked, you know, can I get 15 minutes of your time to learn, you know, what what's top of mind for y'all, if it's similar to what we're seeing, yep. and then hopefully share some solutions that may fit for you. I would keep it a little bit different like that, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence there. Um, it is an in-mail, so it is expected that there's some type of offer, I would say, because you're, you're using an in-mail because it, that's pretty much what it was designed to do. Yeah. Um, yep. So I would probably say it's, it's okay. I think it's okay to ask for the time here. And I know you, Katie, you've been on uh, several of these shows with me. I've never said that. So, <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's a rare occasion, but I think it's okay as long as there is a clear benefit to me giving you that time. So I get, I give you that 15 minutes, I get something specific in return yeah. that's going to help me whether I buy from you or not. And I think that's really important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what would you say? Would, would you folks accept this person to your network? Yeah, I mean, I, I would, uh, I would. Cool, Katie. Uh, probably. I'm in it for the follower. So, what can I? Do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say yeah. I again, um, I think that there's for me there's enough um, specific kind of um, industry knowledge or domain knowledge here. There's, there's something specific about what she, uh, she's saying. There is a little bit of personalization and a, a clear ask that has some level of benefit for me. Um, so I, I like that. Uh, I, I would remove the, our solution and probably just say like the, the thing that you do, but uh, that's about it. I would actually accept this. And then um, I wanna show the final part here as our last bit for today, because we are over time. Um, so, yes. yay. <laughs> This is it. I love it. Yeah. So I'd, I'd play the video, but uh, we, we just don't have the time for that. <laughs> but um, Oh, Larissa. So this is Larissa's sequence. Um, and she says, uh, thanks so much for the help. So glad, absolutely glad we could help you out today, Larissa. <laughs> hey, uh, look, I, yeah. Kudos on, you know, the progression of this sequence, right? I think the um, pattern interrupt at that stage is genius great job awesome yeah so um that's that concludes our show for today we went a little bit over but i think it was worth it i don't know about you <laughs> had a blast um, yeah so yeah. katie always a pleasure james thank you so much for joining us today um look out everybody next week or sorry two weeks from now december 16th there's a really really big show uh we're doing katie and i are hosting 
Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, check your inbox tomorrow for a few announcements. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, James. Y'all have a great day. Mm -hmm. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye. -bye.